serious. What is the most disrespectful thing a guest ever did in your home? Story one. My roommates and I lived in a basement suite in a house during our second year of university with the landlord upstairs. The landlord was the chillest landlord who ever existed and was fine with us throwing parties every weekend, pretty much. She had rented to a group of musicians for years before us and was accustomed to the noise. One time she came down the set of stairs connecting the upper and lower suites to drop off some mail. The door in our basement is normally locked from the outside, so we can't go upstairs through it, but she must have forgotten to lock it back up on her way out. Later that night, we noticed that one of our friends, John, had disappeared. His shoes were still by the door, so we assumed he had walked outside barefoot. We didn't really make much of it because he suddenly appeared back half an hour later. The next day, the landlord comes down and says that we had an escapee last night. We were all confused for a moment, but then it all clicks for us at the same time, John. She recounted the story of what happened to us. Turns out John had been feeling adventurous and without realizing what he was doing, opened the door to the upstairs and walked up. He made his way to the fridge, opened it and started eating handfuls of pie straight from the tin. Not only was she cool enough to not immediately call the police or put an end to our party, she started talking to him. She asked him how old he was. 19 inches. We are Canadian, so we are legal to drink. She follows up with, how long have you been 19? Thinking it was his birthday, which would explain the excessive drunkenness. His answer to that was, I've been 19 for two years. I'm from Campbell River, a small town in BC, where time moves incredibly slowly. After her laughing at his joke and finishing his handful of life, she escorted him back downstairs like nothing had ever happened. Story 2. Back in my bachelor days, my buddy and I decided to hit the nightlife in some bars in Austin. I was never a big drinker and had a few beers over the course of the evening. He was drinking vodka all night like it was water. Needless to say, he was in no condition to drive across town to his place, so I told him he could just crash at mine. Sunday morning and I'm getting ready for church. Knock on the door and ask if he's okay. Told him he could sleep in while I'm gone if he wants to, but he just says he's got to get going and quickly leaves. Get back from church a few hours later and the entire apartment smells like cow. Sniff out the source in the guest bed. Evidently, the bad person had woken up during the middle of the night and evacuated a beagle-sized turd into my sheets, rolled them up, and then continued sleeping the rest of the night in the same bed he had befouled. The real WTF, other than sleeping all night next to a rolled-up sheet with your own monstrous deuce in it, is that he could have just stayed after I left, cleaned up, and I would have probably never known. Fudge you, Warren. Story 3. This happened to my friend. She has a koi pond in her backyard that her and her husband built themselves. It's a nice little pond in the ground with rocks and a waterfall. They also have a couple of cats. They go out of town for a couple of weeks and one of her work friends takes care of her house. A few days in this work friend comes over and dumps the entire bag of cat food onto the kitchen floor. Then she decided that the water in the koi pond looked a bit low, so they turn on the hose to top it off. Only they forget to turn the hose off when they leave. She never comes back to the house to check on anything. A couple days later, the neighbor notices that their backyard is flooded and that there's koi swimming around in the yard. They turn off the water and try to catch the koi, but are not successful. The koi end up dying or getting away. Luckily, the cats inside were okay. The neighbor calls my friend to tell her what happened. Let's just say that my friend is not friends with her coworker anymore. Edit. I told my friend about this subreddit and how I posted what happened to her, and she wanted me to also tell you that a tree that was supposed to be watered in the front yard passed away because her friend didn't water it. Story 4. When I was about 4, I got a stuffed rabbit wearing pajamas from a family friend of ours. We lived in a house that was over a hundred years old, and my parents found the original family who lived there, or rather, their descendants, and we became fast friends. We called her Aunt Janie, even though she wasn't related. So Aunt Janie sent me the rabbit in pajamas, and I took him everywhere. It took serious work for me not to take him to school. His fur was white as snow, so I named him Sugar. Sugar was my bro. I told him everything, which as a military kid who moved every year and never got to make serious friends, ended up being quite a bit. Sugar and I loved watching the fish tank my mom had got me. I would just put my rocking chair up right in front of the tank, and it was better than TV to me. So we moved to the armpit of the U.S., a little town called Altus, Oklahoma. There was a girl next door who didn't seem very nice, but she had a trampoline, so I was willing to deal with it, on the hopes of getting those sweet, sweet jumpy jumps. She came over to our house first, just as a getting-to-know-you first introduction, and Sugar was pulling recon with me. She asked if she could see my rabbit, and I thought hard. Could I trust her? Should I do it so we could be friends and jump on the trampoline? I decided it couldn't hurt after all. We were on me and Sugg's home turf. I no sooner handed her my best friend than she snatched him away, tore off both of his arms and ripped him from stem to stern. It was a long time in my life before I knew pain like that again. Fortunately, I had a first-class trauma surgeon in my family and doctor. Mom spent a solid 30 minutes in the operating suite, 
or dining room table, your call. Fixing my boy up. Sugar is still my point man for life. Story 5. My husband's uncle's wife passed away. They were married for 30 years, total sweethearts, and he was devastated. Aunt Dot was wonderful. Everyone loved her. He couldn't cope being alone, so he put an ad out on Match.com, and the first woman to reply, he married. She is the definition of white trash. He brought her to our house to stay for a long weekend to help us put in a deck in our backyard and so we could meet her. She decided to buy a puppy on the drive over, which wasn't potty trained. It was a Pomeranian, and I thought it was full-grown and housebroken. I'm at work when they arrive. I come home to pour out the water puddles all over my living room, with her sitting on my couch on a new laptop he bought her. She wasn't watching her puppy, just letting it roam. I was in the kitchen at first and didn't see what her puppy has done. Within five minutes, she told me how Aunt Dot's adult children were terrible and trying to take his money, that they didn't approve of her, and on and on. Then I saw the dog. I have two dogs myself, but she had locked them outside. Needless to say, their weekend was cut short and left early. Story 6. My partner's friend was staying with us and brought his large dog. One night, his dog tore up one of the bed's pillows. Instead of letting us know, he just stuffed the pillow and feathers into the pillowcase to hide it. He left the next day and I went to wash the sheets. I pulled the pillow out of the case and completely covered the room in feathers. It was three months ago and I'm still finding feathers floating around. We give him a lot of grief for it. Edit. I was just reminded about what happened a month later, involving the same guest, Kevin. So Kevin comes back to stay with us for their fantasy draft. All the guys in the league are in town to draft and party, so we are hosting two guys, Kevin and we'll call the other guy Paul. I have known both for years. We all went to college together. It's cool. Saturday is their big day to golf and draft, but it was also a really big day for me. I had been running for a year, never exercised before, and had trained hard for six weeks to run a 15K that Saturday. So the run goes great. I'm lazy the rest of the day. Meanwhile, the guys are golfing, drinking, gambling on golfing and drinking. They rush home to change and head to a specific wing place that has fantasy draft specials. I'm home when they come to change and meet another member of the league, Mike, who has known Kevin since they were kids. He's pretty tipsy, but we talk about running. He's been training for a full marathon that's in two weeks. So they leave and I go to bed before they come back. They all come home pretty dinged up, which is totally fine. Turns out Mike is going to crash on the other couch. He definitely couldn't drive. My partner gets in the shower in our master bathroom that is only accessed through our master bedroom. Super common. I'm exhausted bed and all of a sudden someone busts through our door and into the bathroom. It's Mike. He starts vomiting chicken wings into the sink. Not in the toilet next to it, into the ducking sink. All the while, my partner is yelling at him to move to the toilet. Side note, we do have another bathroom that was closer to him and empty. Anyway, both Kevin and Paul rush to help and try to shove the food down the bathroom drain. Because, you know, we have a garbage disposal in our bathroom. Finally, they began scooping it out into a trash bag. I remained in bed with my back turned and pretended to be asleep. After the chicken sink fiasco, Mick settled down and passed out. My partner finally got into bed and apologized. Had a little laugh, began to fall asleep. Not even 60 seconds passed before the silence was broken with Mick screaming, I'm going to cow myself. Of course you are, Mick, of course you are. He was ushered to the proper bathroom. He used the toilet correctly to the best of our knowledge. Crisis averted, right? Fast forward 15 minutes to us being woken up by a heated argument in our living room. Mike was at it again, this time choosing the laundry room as the ideal spot to vomit. Thankfully, he was redirected away from my washer and dryer I had just paid off and threw up in the bathroom. He was convinced he was being guest of the year by choosing the washing machine instead of throwing up on the sheets. His argument was based off of fact water is connected to the washer, washer is connected to the sewer, so on and so forth. Mike, your logic is flipping infallible. No one agreed for obvious reasons, but he is a lawyer, and he put together a pretty convincing argument in person. Impressive. After that argument, he was found sitting in our garage in the dark because he felt unwelcome. The next morning, he left before anyone woke up, and sent my partner a passive-aggressive apology. Thanks, Kevin, for inviting your friend to crash with us. Story 7. Had a friend staying with us for a while. She was trying to get back on her feet. I had just adopted a new kitten, about 10 weeks old. One day, I am standing in the kitchen, talking with said friend when I hear my new kitty meowing, loudly but sounds kind of muffled. I proceed to start looking around for her. She sounded distressed. Said friend just stands there with a kind of crooked smile. So I asked her where the kitten was. She said she had no idea. The meows are getting less and less, and I am walking all over the place, waiting for the next meow to lead me to her. She dot was dot in dot the dot freezer. WWTF? I pretty much screamed at the psycho upon retrieving my shivering, confused, and miserable kit. WTF did you do? She smiled and said, I thought you knew. Cats love to be cold. I told her, well, that's just great. And since she claimed to love and understand cats so much, 
She will appreciate how cold she would be tonight, on the street, out of my house. I told her she had about 10 minutes to get her cow and get out, or not only would she be getting in peach kicking, I would be calling the police regarding her cruelty to animals. She left. Kitty survived to be 18 years old. Story 8. This girl stayed over at my house after the pub. I went to bed with my fella, woke up, girl was gone. Walked into the bathroom later that day, placed stank of cow. Eventually pulled back the shower curtain. There was a jug I used for washing my kid's hair. She'd cow sort of half in the jug, half in the bath. I mean, it was an odd enough thing in the first place, but there's a toilet in that bathroom, which you have to walk past to get to the bath. I got a message on Facebook that evening saying I'm pooped. Thanks for letting me stay. I confronted her, and she claimed she had no idea about it. Obviously, she's never been invited over since. Story 9. I live on a boat. It's a cargo ship built in 1924 and converted into a live aboard in the 50s, but it's still a boat. We sail on it every summer, pretty much. The first thing we tell guests is to be conservative with water because we have tanks that need to be filled and to not put anything in the toilets. The plumbing is much narrower than in a house, and we have septic tanks that don't handle cellulose very well. It's not even a problem because we have trash cans everywhere. Basically, the idea is if you didn't eat it or drink it first, then it has no business being in the toilet. Yet some people just don't get it or don't care our tanks and pump can handle some toilet paper, like in case of a slip-up or just general absent-mindedness. Long story short, people with a young kid came over, kid needed a diaper change, mom proceeded to shove dirty diaper and wet wipes into the toilet, despite there being a very obvious sign and a trash can 20 centimeters away. Obviously, the next day, everything passed away and we had to pull the whole toilet plumbing tank pump system apart. Also, it was the middle of summer, so yeah, that was fun. Needless to say, they were not invited over again. Story 10. A friend broke up with her husband and stopped at my place one night while driving across the country with her two young kids and her entire house packed up. No notice, but she's a friend, so I didn't hesitate to open my door, feed, wash, and give everything needed. Next morning, I had to go to work. I absolutely had to. She's like, no problem, I'll lock up on the way out. I came home to a trashed house. She took a nap. I don't blame her, but the kids didn't. There was maple syrup in the carpets of three rooms and most surfaces, because kids, cats, and syrup, condiments were strewn across the kitchen, which was also flooded with milk. The cereal was found in and under the couches. Poor kids tried to make breakfast. What pissed me off was that she saw the mess when she woke and bolted. Edit. She's met a good one now, and I'm a bridesmaid. Story 11. My mother was in the middle of her fight with cancer. She had been flown overseas a few times, was in the middle of chemo and radiation, all while trying to work and take care of my elderly grandmother. She is one of the kindest and most compassionate people in our community, so everyone was rightfully really concerned about her and her well-being, except for her uncle, who came to the house frequently just to complain about his non-existent medical issues without asking once how she was doing. Even on days when she was laying in a darkened bedroom shivering on a summer day and couldn't come out to greet him because she felt so poorly, he'd still sit in our living room and loudly whine about how his doctor told him he'd have to change his diet for his blood pressure. She is the one who patiently listened and sympathized with his nonsense the most, but did he return a pixel of her compassion? Of course not. My mom has been in remission for years now, and it still fills me with fury what a selfish, narcissistic, idiot, illegitimate child he is. He's dead to me. Story 12. In college, my roommate invited some of his old high school friends to stay at our house for the weekend. One of them got blackout drunk, threw up on our carpet, and cow his pants in one of our armchairs. Edit. Some clarification for those of you saying it's acceptable to get drunk sometimes, and accidents happen. If they were my close friends or even my roommate's close friends, I'm more okay with it. It was two high school seniors, one of which was a kind of friend of my roommate, and the other was poop chair boy whom neither of us had met. They came up to visit our uni and were mostly looking for a free place to stay, so it's not like they were coming up to hang out with my roommate. They came to lunch with us, but they went off to some darties in the afternoon, and we didn't hear from them until 1 a.m. Poop chair boy was being carried, and we ended up having to sit him propped up in an armchair with his head in a trash can. He still kept missing the trash can, getting puke on the carpet, and then at like 3 a.m. we heard a loud shart, and then we had to go throw out our chair. Story 13. When I was 10, my mother and I moved across the country from one city to another, leaving all our friends behind. We didn't get to see many of them for years. When I was 13 and had to have knee surgery, and when one of my mother's old friends, let's call her fat bad person, found out she said she was coming up to support me and my mother and help out while I was recovering. This was a woman who was like an aunt to me. The plan was she'd stay with us for two weeks and help me if I needed it while my mother was at work. She arrives the night before my surgery, has dinner and breakfast, and then goes with us to the hospital, all the time being extremely supportive and helping me and my mother 
through our anxieties about the surgery. Unfortunately, that's where it stopped. When I woke up, fat bad person had gone to get lunch and had eaten too much and gotten food poisoning or something, then had to go back to our place to sleep it off. Sounds legit enough at the time. That night, my mother stayed to have dinner with me at the hospital. She got a call from fat bad person who was asking, why aren't you here? I come up here to hang out with you and you're nowhere. My mother obviously replies that she's in the hospital with me, to which fat bad person says, he'll be fine. Let's go to a bar. Surgery didn't go as well as we thought it would. So I ended up staying in the hospital for a few more nights and every night it'd be the same thing. Then when I finally got home, fat bad person would start saying the same things and start fights with my mother. I came up to see you. Why aren't we going out? We're meant to be having fun. Last time I saw her, she was meant to be hanging out with me while my mother was working. But instead, she was packing her cow while complaining about my mother on the phone to her husband. She didn't even say goodbye on the way out. Apparently, my mom got a text from fat bad person recently saying she was in town and she wanted to hang out because she'd forgiven her. Mom obviously told her no and to not contact her again. Story 14. A friend became homeless, so I took him in. He invited his boyfriend from another state to move in with us without consulting me. I didn't say anything because I was terrified of living alone at the time. An ex was stalking me. He got a dog off of Craigslist instead of paying rent. The dog hurt my little wiener dog, and I had to deal with rehoming his dog because he couldn't deal with the emotions. He misrepresented the situation to his boyfriend and made me sound like a terrible person. My grandpa was in town and helped me move a futon out of storage to my home so my guests could stop sleeping on the couch. When we came inside, the autistic boyfriend was watching weird furry videos at his computer. I left town for three days to visit a friend graduating from basic training. When I came back, they had moved out into another friend's house. After talking nonsense about me, the house was unlocked. There was no water for my dog or cat. Instead of changing the cat litter, they had dumped it right outside the back door. Beer cans were everywhere. I don't know how they could have afforded booze because they supposedly had no money. And a censored photos magazine was left on my bed. They were there for less than three weeks. A couple months later, my friend's lease expired. The couple had not yet gotten jobs. I let everyone else rent rooms from me. When my former guests asked, I was tired of them walking all over me and told them no. Story 15. The guy who we invited to our weekly poker game after he creepily found out about it from a mutual friend and invited himself. It was around Christmas time, so he brings two fruitcakes and tells my roommate and I, girls, in front of our other friends, mostly guys, that the cakes are just for us because they're low in sat fat, his obnoxious way of saying saturated fat, and girls don't want to get fat. He then proceeded to play like an absolute, splashing the candy, trying to bet under the minimum, folding out of turn, etc. He was loud and rude and kept saying weird things all night. Just as everyone was getting thoroughly sick of him, he turns to me and asks me if I want to go on a date sometime. In front of about 12 other people, I was not in any way attracted to this guy, nor had I done anything to encourage him to think so. I told him no as nicely as I could, but goddammit, he persisted. He asked me out again and said, If you say no this time, everyone will know it's because you think you're better than me, and I'm not good enough to go out with you. Of course, I wanted to tell him that I thought he was an unpleasant person, and that's why I didn't want to go out with him, but I didn't want to end up having a SVU episode based on my gruesome murder. I sputtered out something about not wanting to date anyone at the moment, and he more or less accepted it and shut up. We never invited him back and we had poker at someone else's house for a while after, just to be sure he wouldn't show up. He later got arrested for threatening to shoot his neighbor over parking spot he'd shoveled out. Story 16. A friend was house-sitting for me while I had a long weekend away. They said they would stop by two days out of the five to make sure everything was good and water my plants. They showed up the day I left, unplugged my fridge and left, came home to everything rotten and it smelled like someone was murdered in the fridge called and asked what happened, and she said she was mad at me because her brand new boyfriend said I was cute. I was in a committed relationship with another woman at the time, literally the last person to be interested in her scumbag boyfriend. We weren't friends after that, and it took everything in me to not go kick her peach. I'm not a fighter by nature, but that tested me. Story 17. Husband and I threw a party at our house once. Never again. So many guests just had no flipping respect for our property. One guy got in an argument with his girlfriend and punched a hole in the drywall in our downstairs bathroom out of frustration. Someone threw a jello shot at the wall. It went unnoticed until morning when I found it had slid down the wall and ruined the carpet. We had typical party food set out for people to eat, but apparently that wasn't good enough for some people. I caught one lady cracking some of our eggs onto a paper plate because she wanted eggs. Caught another bad person putting an entire bag of my pizza rolls into the microwave, bag and all. For fudge's sake, we had tons of snacks out. There is no excuse to dig through our goddamn fridge for something else.
smoking in the house when we clearly told everyone to breathe in the garage. Found lots of cane butts laying around in the house. We're done having parties, added it to add. Holy cow, I didn't think this many people would respond. I should have added some backstory to my original post. The idiots that caused trouble at our house weren't even friends of my husband or I. We planned this party with one other guy, who behind our backs invited a bunch of his own friends, who all brought guests. The day of the party, we thought everything would go smoothly, even if we had a ton of extra people. The more the merrier, as they say. Turns out we were wrong and have since learned our lesson. We also chewed out the other guy for inviting his unpleasant person friends and their buddies. So to answer all of the messages of your friends suck, yeah, one of them did. We don't talk to him anymore. Story 18. After an afternoon of drinking, a friend of mine, my GF and her friend, had all decided to sit down on the couch and watch a movie. We had all fallen asleep when my GF nudges me to wake me up. I woke up to see my friend standing in the corner pissing onto my dog's bed. Pissing like a racehorse, as they say. I just kept going and going and going. My girlfriend, now crying with laughter, comments as I just stare incredulously. I have never seen you look shocked. Finally, as the pissing continues, I exclaim, Gord! What the fudge are you doing? He looks back at me smiling and say, What? I replied. You're pissing in my house. He laughs and says, No, I'm not. Finishes, sits back down in the couch and immediately goes back to sleep. Names have not been changed to protect the idiot. He has not been to my house since... The three of us continue to laugh about it to this day. Story 19. One summer, while my family was up north, my best friend at the time asked if her and my other good friend could use my pool. I said okay and told her where the key was. She ended up throwing not one, but three house parties at my house without my knowledge. My grandmother even walked in on one because she was there to water the plants. The entire house was trashed. There was bleach spots on my lawn, bong water stains on the kitchen tablecloth, and broken glass everywhere. Wasn't friends with her after that. Edit. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to say that I joined Reddit yesterday, and this is my very first post. Thank you so much for all of the support. You guys rock. Story 20. When I was about 13, a guy from school joined the same cricket club as me in my village, despite living nowhere near. So my mom would pick us both us from school, feed us at home, then we would walk up to the club. Whilst playing football in the garden before training started, he accidentally kicked the ball over the fence into my elderly neighbor's garden. I asked him to be careful as they often spent time in the garden and had asked us to be careful with balls many times before. He decided to get every ball in my garden and kick or throw them over the fence, including rock-hard cricket and hockey balls, one by one until there were none left while saying nothing, just staring at me. Still irritates me to this day. Story 21. One of my former DD players emptied a few pocketfuls of dirt, sod, and mud into our bathtub and bathroom sink. It caused an extremely slow drain for months while we tried to figure it out. And honestly, we still can't understand why he did it. Also, we are recovering alcoholics, and he would leave half full handles of whiskey, good stuff too, for just in case y'all change your minds and want to stop being cats. Then, we have the friend who tried to convince my wife and I to swing. We are not into that scene at all, and there is a limited number of times you can tell me that you want to fudge my wife, that number is one, and trying to get me too drunk to stop you is a bad call, because I had an iron liver at the time, and I will long outlast you. Story 22. While my family was on a beach trip, we let our babysitters babysit the house and cats for one week. We trusted them, or so we thought we did. While my family was at this beach, the babysitters and her sisters, who were in high school at the time, held a party. They didn't clean up very well, so there was a cane burn on our living room carpet, blood on the bathroom wall, and our beds were not made properly. My dad went berserk, and they ended up having to pay for all new locks to the house and a new carpet. They could have been messed up harder, but I guess my dad decided against it. 2K in damage would make them learn their lesson. I remember my dad saying the worst part was knowing that he was pissed someone had the nerve to put out a cane butt on someone else's carpet. So yeah, that's pretty, oh no, disrespectful. Story 23. A few years ago, I had just moved to another town 100 kilometers from my hometown to attend uni. One day as I'm about to make my way to class, I get a call from a close friend, telling me he dropped some acid and he's on a train to town I'm staying in, and asks if he can come to my house to chill breathe some candy. I obviously agree. I was a terrible student, and as I said, it was a close friend. Go to pick him up at the station and make way back to the house, which I was sharing with two flatmates, both girls. Everything seems to be fine. We blaze a couple joints, start watching some South Park and chilling. At one point, one of my flatmates starts cooking lunch for all. We all eat our food, and she goes back to the kitchen as I go peeing. When I get back, I find my friend in the kitchen, where he's cornered said flatmate. Not like physically restraining her, but our kitchen was very narrow and he was in front of the only door. And out of the blue, he asks her to fudge him, getting more and more insistent about it. 
My flatmate refuses, obviously distressed by the situation, but I manage to grab my friend by the back of his shirt. I tell him we gotta go and shove him outside the house, where I tell him I'm getting him on a train and he's going back home. Later on, I found out he had had a huge mental breakdown and was later diagnosed with schizophrenia and underwent some major therapy. Details are hazy as I did leave the country shortly after. When I got back, my flatmates were talking about it. And even if they said it was all good and nothing serious had really gone down, they were both very badass, I must say. I still feel kind of guilty to this day when I think about that episode. Being the one who got the dude in. Edit. Formatting. Story 24. I can't remember who it was. It was a family member. My son was around two and he was getting himself an apple or an orange. He'd get it off the counter, peel the sticker off, wash it, and proceed to peel it or just eat it. Well, as he was washing his fruit, a guest goes to him and takes his fruit and tells him he's too young to be getting his own food. I tell them I taught him how to get a snack and it's okay if he wants to eat some fruit. They insist that he should ask first, and when he said please, they washed it and prepared the fruit for him. To me, that's disrespectful because I teach my son how to take care of himself, and he gets so happy when he can do more things for himself. And they took that away from him and made him beg for something that was already his. Story 25. I had a friend that lived down the street from me. He would come over often, and I would go over often. He got in the habit, however, of just walking in our house. One day he knocks and my mom answers the door who is like seven months pregnant. We had to go somewhere, so my mom was like, sorry, not right now. He shoves the door open and my mom gets hit. My mom is trying to push our door shut while he's trying to push it open like a game of tug of war. He had the better angle and she was pregnant, so he had the advantage even though he was like 10. So I run up and help push the door shut. The next day he gets chalk and writes cuss words all over our driveway. We had various occasions where he would treat my family this way. Why I continue to be his friend? No freaking clue. Story 26. This was 15 years ago. A work acquaintance ended up at one of our semi-regular poker nights. She spent the entire tournament on her phone, complaining about how bored she was. She was also helping herself to our booze and generally being a poor guest in my house. I always insist that drunk guests stay the night, unless they arranged for a safe ride home. This girl passed out on my couch long before people were ready to leave. Fast forward to the next morning when she is waking up and pour out the water-soaked couch cushions and a nasty hangover. She quickly drove herself home without saying a word. No apology and no acknowledgement of her sloppy behavior. I didn't start her new couch pisser nickname at work, but I did nothing to stop it. Story 27. Had messy anal in my roommate's bed. We had known this girl for a little bit, and we were all out drinking one night. The plan was for her to crash at ours because she lived far away. She asked my roommate if she could head to our ahead of us because it was late and she was sleepy. My roommate and I were still up to party, so we stayed out a while longer. I ended up crashing at my girlfriend, so I didn't find out about any of this until the next morning. Unbeknownst to us, this girl met a guy and that was her real reason for wanting to leave early. When my roommate got home, this girl was passed out and there was cow smeared on the wall next to her bed. Story 28, not my home, but we were having a friendsgiving at our friend's apartment, who ill call H. Now, mind you, this lady had been cooking nonstop by herself a Thanksgiving feast. Turkey, sides, some pies, everything. Girl had been working hard to make this awesome feast, which I might add was delicious. The one thing she didn't get to was stuffing, so she asked someone if they could bring stuffing. One guy volunteers the day before. He chose to do this, it's important to remember that, to bring stuffing. Come the time to eat, stuffing man isn't there. Food's all laid out, wait to be eaten, but stuffing man is like 10 minutes late. Finally, we get a call saying he's picking up his stuffing and coming over. Great, we can wait a little more. He arrives and what does he have? A box of stuffing, not made. He literally went to the store and bought a box of stuffing without having even made it. When we asked him what he was doing with the box, he said, Oh, H can just make it for us. At that point, we all wanted to give him some slaps to the face. H made the stuffing, but you could tell that it seriously pissed her off and I don't blame her. Ever since that, we literally don't give him any task or duties in terms of organizing fun things. Anytime he asks why we don't trust him, we just tell him to stuff it. Story 29. My ex's mother came to visit, and she was just a terror. The ex and I were renting a small apartment on a tight budget for college. His mother comes over and brings her new husband and their toddler son. She proceeded to raid our fridge and cook food for the three of them because they didn't want to stop for food on the way, 2.5 hour drive, and their son had no discipline at all. He took a few bites of our fruit and then just leave them. He found our cases of water and soda and started to open them. They just let him do it. The ex didn't say anything because he wanted to avoid confrontation. The visit proceeded with his mom commenting on how I had dyed my hair made me look like I had bald patches. Honestly, I'm so happy that woman is out of my life. Story 30. Back in college, my four friends and I rented a house, 
and between the five of us we had enough friends to throw pretty big house parties, like 150. 200 people that we all knew pretty well. So we trusted them and we would leave our rooms open if people wanted to chill in them. The first few parties went fine, until one of my roommates met this kid we'll call Chris. This flipping kid? Of course the roommate that met him has the worst judge of character. First, my friends in the line for the bathroom tell me they think there's funny business going on in there, so I start banging on the door. Chris walks out with a girl claiming he can't concentrate with my banging, so I tell him, good, knock it off. Then my roommate catches Chris heading into his room, which was empty, with a girl who was very clearly too drunk to make any decisions. So he kicked them out immediately and told Chris to get out of our house. We thought he had left. But since my bed is hidden in my room and we didn't think he'd have the audacity to climb over all the cow I put in front of it to specifically block people from going to my bed, we didn't notice him there. So when we finally see that he's lying in my bed, I tell him to get the fudge off. In the process, he drunkenly spills an entire beer can on my pillows and mattress. I have a weird tick about my specific sleeping habits, so I couldn't sleep for days. It took everything in me not to punch the cow out of this idiot. Story 31 Slapped the back of my head because I said something he didn't like. In my house. It wasn't a love tap either. Dude smacked the cow out of me. Then got mad and told my GF at the time I was going to be an abusive boyfriend and she should leave me after I grabbed him by the chin and told him not to disrespect me like that again. Or we'd have a big problem. It was my cousin. To this day I just small chat to not cause family drama, but still don't talk to him like I used to. I may have overreacted, but I'm a grown man and it was my house. Don't slap me, it's disrespectful. In fairness, everyone had a few drinks in them at the time of the slapping slash chin grabbing, or I don't think any of it would have happened. But the abusive stuff he told my GF was the next day sober behind my back, which is what upset me the most. Story 32. 1. Roommate invites this guy over for whatever reason. I own an overprotective GSD who barks to let me know someone is at my house and is very intimidating, apparently. I don't see it. She's the sweetest once she stops barking, just doing her job. Walks into my house and proceeds to tell me that he has no problem breaking my dog's neck if he needds to. I'm a 5'7", 130 pounds girl, and I wanted to kick his peach for saying that about my dog, too. Was eating dinner at home and my boyfriend had one of his friends over? I set my plate on the counter to get a drink and turn around, and boyfriend's friend is eating off my plate? 3. Some dude I barely know decides to get drunk in my house, open my lunch meat cheese drawer in my fridge, and pour out the water in it. Story 33. My best friend was staying with me and my husband for the weekend. Her and I went to a vineyard where we both got pretty drunk, come home to have a bonfire and have some friends over. I go to bed and my husband, who had not been drinking, takes some people home and locks up the house. I wake up the next morning to find my friend lying on my dining room floor from the waist down with her urine-soaked pants next to her. After she leaves that day, my husband tells me she attempted to give him a blowjob and when he refused, told him, you know you want it. She was engaged to a woman and is now married to her. Needless to say, we are not friends anymore. There's more to the story if anyone wants to hear it, but it's a lot to type out. Edit to add more. So as I'm changing the bed after my friend leaves, I discover she has peed all over the bed and it had gotten on the mattress. When I address this with her, she offers to have a new mattress sent to me and have my carpets cleaned since she had thrown up on them too. When she finally sends me an email apologizing, she adds a paragraph grasping at straws to justify her behavior. She thought everyone was drunk, but she guessed she was the only one. No, but we're all adults and put ourselves to bed when we should. And also, she felt like she had close relationship, but there was no proof and she felt violated. When I read that, I immediately texted her demanding to know if she was implying my husband sixily assaulted her. She said, no, that's not at all what she said. So I asked what she meant. My husband was not the only man at the house and she had been all over my friend's boyfriend that evening also. She could have been trying to implicate any guy. She told me to just forget it. And I assured her I would never forget any of this. Just to add, she weighs a considerable amount and was on her period at the time of the visit. I feel like if anyone had assaulted her in my very bright white dining room, I would have noticed. I sure as hell noticed the throw up and pee all over the place. Also, her girlfriend had complained to me about her tendency when drunk to inappropriately text her male friend's pics. And I know how inappropriate she can be when she's had too much. I had a really hard time breaking up this friendship. And I was trying to figure out how we could stay friends. However... When my husband asked me if I would be comfortable with him, continuing a friendship if one of his friends did something like that to me, I knew exactly what I had to do. Unfriend on Facebook, breakup letter detailing why I would not be continuing our friendship. Number deleted and blocked. Then she had the gall to tell me my services would no longer be needed as a bridesmaid in her wedding. Like I was planning on being a bridesmaid after all that. I feel like she was really trying to place blame elsewhere for her making a compete peach of herself. Story 34 
Friend said she missed the last bus out of the neighborhood and asked if she could spend the night on my couch. I said cool. Woke up in the morning and she was standing in the doorway to the kitchen with a cup of coffee and a huge wet spot across her lap. I thought she spilled coffee on herself and asked her if she was okay. She was like, oh, it's not coffee. WTF. I dot thought she was kidding. Went and checked couch and there was the biggest wet spot ever. She literally peed on my couch, no alcohol involved, and stood there with a cow eating grin on her face, drinking a cup of coffee. Had to loan her pants to get home and threw the couch out. Story 35. I don't care if people breathe candy, used to breathe myself, but when I moved in with my SO, I told them I couldn't be around it because I work for police departments and they always candy test, didn't even want to chance a home visit with the smell around, and I was in the application process for a few departments. One night, we're just sitting at our apartment when his brother shows up with his two friends who are clearly strung out on something. I told them to please not breathe in the apartment, but they proceeded to dump candy on the table, all over my book I had there and were about to breathe. I got up to leave and one of them followed me out screaming that I better not call the cops. I went and sat in my car for a few hours while they stayed inside smoking. While I was outside, they thought it'd be funny to breathe in my closet with all my clothes, so I had to wash them the next day. Story 36. A few years back, my parents were having a big holiday party with about 40 guests. My wife, a Latin American, and I, European mutt, came by a bit before it started to help prepare. Well, about an hour or so into the party, my wife says we need to go. I'm like, oh great, what happened? My wife says, I'll tell you in the car. Smart woman. We made up some excuse to my family and left. Apparently, one of the guests said something rude to another guest about my wife. My wife heard and asked him about it, and his response was literally, I didn't think you spoke English. It was smart of her to get me out of there before my temper got me in trouble. God, oh no, it still pisses me off. Story 37. They were unannounced and only an acquaintance. But we talked about something sometime and they decided to visit me. Nice person that I am. I let them in. They came in reeking like a ship full of sailors that returned from an 80-day voyage on the high seas. You know the drunken guys at the supermarket that barely wash themselves anymore like sour milk, pour out the water and weak old sweat? That times 10. He sat down on a chair that I had put a blanket on earlier. I tried to get rid of him quickly and eventually managed to get him to leave. Once outside, he asked me to fix his bike because apparently he had never pumped a tire in his life and didn't know how. I aired every room he was in after he left and had to wash the blanket because I couldn't get rid of the rank peach stank. Story 38. There once was a time I was renting out the spare bedrooms for extra money. Housemate from hell. Washed a heavy blanket in the machine under the regular settings leading to it clunking all over the place three times a week. I told her that's going to break the machine. I don't care. It's not mine. I'd also told her to turn off the dryer buzzer after 10 p.m. because I have to work in the morning, and the machine's right next to my bedroom. Not only did she leave it on, she put it on wrinkle shield mode, which turns the dryer back on for a short time after 15 minutes, over and over again. What was she drying? A pair of short shorts with a metal belt attached that she'd put through the wash by itself. By the third run of the dryer, my sleep was thoroughly ruined and I discovered she was gone. One time she decided to help out by washing the dishes. She didn't know how to stack the dishwasher, so she did it by hand. But she also didn't want to get her hands dirty with soap. So she squirted the detergent directly on each dish, waved the brush over it, and rinsed it right down the drain. She then complained that the hot water had stopped working halfway through. But by that point, she'd already wasted an entire bottle of concentrated dish soap anyway. How do we know she couldn't stack the dishwasher? She once put a laundry pod in it with the glasses facing up. The final straw was when she'd forgotten her key and instead of asking me for help, had her boyfriend break the door down. Story 39. Oh man, do I have a story? Not me, but my best friend, my friend, had a nightmare scenario in which she sent me play-by-play -play updates because it was so insane. Started outside the home but finished inside the home. My friend went with three other girls. Friend one, friend two, and crazy girl to visit one of their friends, the host, about five hours away. No big deal. They were all excited and chatty and were having a good weekend with each other on Friday. I received updates. They all looked happy and excited to be there. Then Saturday rolled around. They went into the downtown area of where the host lived. Crazy girl wanted to take old-timey photos in this photo booth with friends one, two, and the host. None of them wanted to take photos, so they declined. Crazy girl got angry and started making snide, passive-aggressive comments. Made the situation uncomfortable. Everyone tried to ignore them and or laugh it off, but Crazy Girl wouldn't stop and kept complaining about the high price of everything. Though photos were $20 starting, she claimed she was broke. They left to go get ready for some nighttime event and had to go back to the host's home. Crazy Girl didn't stop making snide remarks. Finally, at the house, my friend decided she'd had enough of this brat's griping, 
turned to Crazy Girl and told her to stop acting like such a bad person. Crazy Girl didn't like that at all. They all got into a screaming match. Crazy Girl accused all of them of being horrible friends, called the host a terrible host, and then went into her guest room and locked herself in there. The host burst into tears. It was her first time hosting everyone at her new house, like, ever she'd always lived with her parents before this. This wasn't supposed to be how it was for her. The host sucked it up like a trooper and tried to talk to Crazy Girl through the guest room door. Crazy Girl wasn't having it, ignored her through the door. Friend One finally convinced the host to leave her alone to cool off and keep up with the plans of going out that night. They got ready to go, and before they left, tried to talk to her one more time. No dice, so as they were leaving, Friend 2 is like, Crazy Girl has told me before she's just left things after fights, and Friend 2 didn't trust her mental state at the moment. Friend 2 grabbed the car keys from the counter, so that way Crazy Girl wouldn't steal the car and leave them abandoned from their homes five hours away and in another state. They come back to the house and find that Crazy Girl locked herself in the bathroom and wouldn't come out for an hour for whatever reason. The host tried talking to her again. No dice. Again. Finally, Crazy Girl came out and locked herself back in the guest room without speaking to any of them. The host was once again inconsolable, and they all went to bed stressed, angry, and heartbroken over a ruined girl's weekend. The next day, my friend, friends one and two, and Crazy Girl all get ready to go and are at the car. Crazy Girl wouldn't say goodbye to the host, or really anyone else for that matter, and instead hopped in the back and pretended to fall asleep immediately. The other girls were beyond astounded but said their goodbyes and left. Crazy Girl pretended to sleep the entire way back. When they get back, everyone goes their separate ways, but none as fast as the Crazy Girl. When my friend taps on her car window to calmly confront her, Crazy Girl opens the window a crack, like she's terrified my friend will launch at her through the window. My friend wouldn't do this for the record. My friend asks if they're going to talk about what just happened. Crazy Girl spouts something about how she needs some time to process what just happened, and then slams on the gas and speeds off. Friend one moments later sends a panicked group text to the host and the other girls. Turns out Crazy Girl is notorious for revenge pranks. One time, her uncle upset her over something really small and insignificant. So what did she do? Crazy Girl put laxatives in the milk and put it back in the fridge for the entire family to drink, children included. The only reason why Friend 1 knew about this was because Crazy Girl bragged about it to Friend 1. The worst part is they left Crazy Girl at home, all alone for an entire evening. She had ample time to tamper with anything in the house. Apparently, the host spent the rest of her morning dumping her unsealed milk, orange juice, and checking every open container in her house for fear that Crazy Girl swapped out her conditioner with anti-itch cream or decided to put laxatives in the milk again, or worse. I asked my friend about Crazy Girl last week. So far, no one's heard from her since.